And we're back. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another Readsy Live, uh, another edition of our ongoing series of webinars where we bring on professionals from the world of publishing uh, to teach, teach you how to write and publish better books. Um, after a, a sort of brief sojourn into the world of fiction uh, and a bit of marketing this year, uh, we're going to take a detour into the world of nonfiction and, in particular, uh, memoirs. Uh, today, I've got with us uh, an author, an editor, uh, a teacher, a copy editor, uh, Larry O'Connor, who is uh, going to talk to us about, you know, uh, writing a memoir and uh, specifically uh, how to sort of go about starting it. You know, going from the idea of I want to write a memoir to having the raw materials to put that together. But I'll let him uh, explain that. Anyway, uh, for those of you who are new to this, I'm Martin uh, from the team at Readsy, based here in London. Uh, yeah, we've been doing this for a couple of years, uh, bringing webinars every two weeks or so, uh, just to help you guys uh, understand uh, how it's done. Uh, because, you know, writing a book and publishing a book uh, isn't uh, rocket science. Um, it's just sometimes the information is uh, concealed in some ways. But uh, hopefully through these webinars, we can demystify the, uh, demystify the process for you and show you how um, just about anyone can uh, write a book and put it out there. Uh, it's just a matter of how good it is, and that's up to you and uh, the work you're willing to put in. Um, while we're waiting, uh, let me know in the comments uh, where you're from. Uh, if you've never used this YouTube thing before, uh, on the right-hand side, if you're using desktop, you'll see a bunch of comments. Uh, if you're logged into YouTube, you can type down there, and uh, yeah, well, I'll be able to see it later on when we do a QA. and uh, I'll be able to take your questions and share them with Larry. Uh, but hey! Wellness Shepherd sends blessing our ways. Thank you. Uh, Nancy from Rogers Park in Chicago. Patrick from Pennsylvania. Uh, Anthony wants to write uh, their memoirs, write his memoir, or they still remember it. That's, uh, that's an important bit of timing. Uh, but hopefully, uh, some of the exercises that Larry will share today will uh, help you excavate those memories and uh, crystallize them. Uh, John from Detroit. Scott from Westchester, PA. Uh, Denise Lagrosa from Asia. A broad area, but uh, very good. Uh, we have someone from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, Chad from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Jolene from Seattle, Washington, hitting the West Coast there. Uh, Larie uh, from Texas, fantastic. Uh, hopefully some of you are looking to write a memoir or have an inkling of a desire to write a memoir, or maybe you just want to know how to uh, you know, mine your memories uh, and write stories based off of them, which is you know, a skill just about any writer would like. Uh, either way, uh, I believe you're going to learn quite a lot today. I've been speaking to Larry for the last 15 minutes, and he's fantastic. You're going to learn a whole lot from him. Uh, Josephine says, so looking forward to, to this one on memoir from Ireland. Josephine Nolan, thank you. Uh, Noah from Lebanon, welcome. Uh, Royale from Hollywood, uh, California, I assume. Uh, and we have Elizabeth from Pennsylvania, fantastic. And Precious from Trinidad and Tobago, fantastic. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know about you guys, uh, but I've been spending this week uh, watching a fair amount of uh, Olympics action, uh, which, you know, I sort of forget that uh, I'm really into it, and then it sort of crawls up, uh, you know, every four years, and suddenly I'm really fascinated and following a lot of judo and gymnastics and stuff I'd never follow the rest of the time. Uh, but for tonight, we're taking a break uh, from the vaults and the mats, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, writing memoirs. Neil from LA teaches memoir writing, uh, but he says he can always learn something new. Fantastic. Hey, uh, Asila from uh, Malaysia. Apa kabar? Kabar baik? Well, th welcome. Thank you for staying up so late or waking up so early. Uh, someone from the Orkney Islands. Uh, Carrie from Minnesota. Fantastic. Okay, just going to be a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to bring on our guest, uh, guest Larry O'Connor, uh, who'll be talking to us about uh, memoirs for beginners, writing them in particular. Uh, reading them, I guess you don't really need much of an instruction on that. Uh, Daisy Dundee, strangely from Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, okay, well, before we join, I might as well get some housekeeping out of the way. Uh, of course, uh, some folks have found out about this because they're signed up uh, to Readsy's newsletter. Readsy is a marketplace and network where authors uh, and writers can get in touch with uh, professionals like editors and designers. But we also have like a load of other resources, including webinars like this, uh, free courses, uh, and yeah, pretty much anything else you sort of need to write a book. Uh, head to blog.readsy.com, check it out. You might want to sign up for the newsletter, and you'll be the first one to find out 
about anything we do here going forward. Uh, yeah, uh, just to let you know, uh, we'll, we'll, this video will be replayed, so if you can't stick around for the whole thing, it's on YouTube, so whatever we stream here is available for replay as soon as we're done. Uh, but you can also go to blog.readz.com slash live. You'll find it in the, uh, in the description below. And by the end of the week, I will have uh, a transcript done of uh, Larry's presentation. So don't worry about taking notes. Uh, as long as you know how to get back to ReadZ, uh, you have all the notes you need. Okay, fantastic. Uh, all right, we're just going to have a couple of minutes. Oh, actually... No need a couple of minutes. It's uh, 3 p.m. on the East Coast, noon on the West Coast, 8 p.m. here in London, uh, which means it's the perfect time to bring on uh, my guest for today, uh, Larry O'Connor. Larry, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate the introduction. And uh, as I've discovered, uh, you're coming to us from Park Slope, New York. Yes, indeed. Park Slope, Brooklyn. That's where, um, you know, you'll, this, you know, in my you know, comfortable confines here. Beautiful summer day here in in Park Slope, Brooklyn. A lot of a lot of writers around, and uh, I'm uh, hoping some of them will be some will be watching. And uh, and and here we go. Okay, fantastic. Just one more bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, if you could just like this video and maybe even subscribe to Read Z's channel, we put out like two new videos each week, sort of on any writing and publishing topic. So, uh, yeah. You might like it, but uh, at the very least, give this a like. It goes, uh, it goes a long way to help us. Uh, okay, uh, but before we properly kick off, we'll give folks a few minutes just to filter in. Uh, Larry, speaking of uh, memoirs, uh, what is your short memoir, your professional bio? Uh, what brings ah. you here today? Ah, yes. Well, um... You know, currently, uh, currently, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a journalist by trade. I've been working in journalism for for uh, my professional life, and uh, currently, I'm working as a part-time editor on the opinion desk of the New York Times. I um, previously was at the New York Post and the Wall Street Journal before that in 2002 or three. I published a memoir called uh, "Tip of the Iceberg." And so it is in that context that I speak today. Um, Tip of the Iceberg was, uh, I write personal essays and I'm currently working on another memoir. And uh, Tip of the Iceberg was uh, shortlisted for the William Soroyan Prize of, 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 of uh, International Writing. Uh, it's sponsored by Stanford University. So um, that's, you know, my, uh, that's my professional bio as it relates to uh, what we're talking about today, Memoirs for Beginners. Okay, fantastic. For those of you just joining, this is Larry O'Connor, our presenter for today. Uh, you know, a lot of folks have turned up nice and early. Uh, we want to pack in as much as we can here. Uh, feel free to ask questions as it goes. I'll be manning the comments board, hopefully answering some stuff. However, we will be having a Q&A at the end, so uh, do stick around uh, and reshare your questions then. Um, yeah, well, I might just leave you alone, Larry. Uh, if you need anything, just let me know, but uh, I'll, I'll catch you for the Q&A. You bet. Oh, sorry. Press the wrong one. I'll put it on to you. Okay, thank you. Well, hello, hello everybody, and uh, thank you for joining. Um, it's uh, you know, 3 o'clock in New York, and um, again, multiple different times all across the, you know, the globe. It's very nice to uh, hear the voices of uh, this, you know, the, the, the remarks of those people who have, have joined in. Today, we're going to be learning about about memoirs and the writing of memoirs. What I want to start with you, this is basically the beginnings of when you just are, 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 you know, you've just got the, 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 the box in front of you with all of those personal effects. Well, maybe there's more than one box and uh, they're on a big table and you say to yourself, well, I just don't know, you know, where to begin here. I mean, uh, you know, help me, help me with this. And uh, I'm here to tell you that uh, I've got some tools that have been very successful with students that I've worked with and have helped me in my own work. Um, I did mention uh, before that I was the author of Tip of the Iceberg, a, a, a memoir that, uh, you, that, that uh, I'm, I'm quite proud of that was published in 2002, currently working on um, a, a memoir of my grandfather's life. I'm also the in-house editor for the my wife and memoirist and novelist, Mary Morris. 
who um, is the author of uh, Nothing to Declare, uh, which is an acclaimed feminist classic memoir, and also is re has recently published a memoir called uh, All the Way to the Tigers, which is currently um, available in paperback. So you've got those, let's start, you've got those boxes of of personal effects. Let's start with that metaphor. And you say to yourself, oh, I don't know what what to do with this. And they, and these are, are things that you've collected through your life. And in terms of a, of a memoir, we're talking about memories. And um, I'm here to say, because um, you're saying to yourself, well, I just don't know where to begin with this, that I need some help. And um, that's that's where I come in. I'm sort of like going to be the person that sort of guides you to a place where you can take all of that raw material and begin to feel like you can turn it into the memoir that you want to write. If you like this, prefer not the box of books, more like a boost or a jump start. That's what I'm looking to do for you is uh, jump start you through the process of getting that raw material so that you can begin to think, yeah. I think I've got a story to tell, and that's going to be our goal. Let's start, you know, with this thought that no memory is insignificant. It's it's one of the things that I think is true of those who are just getting started. You know, you're the you're the person who says, um, you know, I've got to get my life story down because um, it's that time of my life. Or you might be the person who's coming here with uh with a story that you're pretty darn sure that you know what you want to tell you're pretty darn sure that it's it's going to be about what happened in war or what happened in your family or that what happened um you know in a, in a, in something that you couldn't control and that you want to write about that from a lot of different reasons but primarily i mean a lot of folks that i've talked to and i've worked with say that they want to write those memoirs to help others and, and that is just such a noble pursuit and one of the things that i want to underscore in terms of uh what we're talking about here is to get to a place where you're going to be telling that in an honest way um because i don't want to get too far ahead of myself that you are in a place here with me in this moment uh, talking about process, not product. And that's what my message is to you here in when I discuss what I call the I remember exercise that is the very beginnings of the process of getting to the material that, uh, that it is that you're you you know that that uh, that that is your story to tell. So let's 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 say this about what I you know that at the heart of all of this is the notion that I'm going to facilitate that for you. That um, I can do two things. I can help you find the story that you want to tell. To me, that's the key. It's your story. It's not my story. And I can help you acquire the tools with which to tell it. Now, what is a memoir anyway? I mean, um, you know, Martin, I think, and people will say that when they're talking about memoir, that I've heard it sort of in this year, sort of like that he's referred to the memoirs, which of course people do. They, you're sort of getting started with your story or you're looking at the nonfiction um, section of a bookstore and there are so many memoirs. Well, when I think of a memoir, I tend to think of uh, something that is about, I was born um, with a silver spoon I, uh, in my mouth. I had, uh, I went to private school, I met the right people. Um, they connected me to uh, um, a university job. Um, you know, I set up with uh, political actors and I ran for Congress in, 1982 and uh, lost, and then 1984, I, uh, I gained my seat in Congress, and then that's the rest of it. It's a it's a story of a life rather than a non creative nonfiction story of your own life. That is a story that is a memoir, and that I think is where we can 
get to a place where we sort of like say, okay, well, what's creative nonfiction? Does that mean I can make it up like I can with fiction? And my answer to that is, is when I talk to students, is, is that, you know, it, it is that you can't. You can't fully make it up, but there are tools in our toolbox that we're going to get to that you can mine that material which is memory which sometimes uh, can be um, not what it seems what i'm going to do now is just going to give you a sense of what an i remember sounds like uh, from 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 my own work and this is just going to be very brief but i think what it does is it 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 illustrates and underscores what i'm trying to get to in terms of getting to that, getting back to that box, those boxes, those personal effects, and digging in and finding something that you might want to build a story around. Um, in terms of, of the book that I'm referring to, which is Tip of the Iceberg, I'm going to hold it over there. There we go. Um, this was a book that I published. First, I was going to work on something that was about how cold influences culture, um, how behavior of, of people in cold cultures were, diff were, were different than those in uh, Mediterranean cultures, how we're, I'm from the north, if you will, from Canada, and how we're more reserved, how I find myself, you know, a little bit sort of uncertain about doing, you know, Ritzy webinars. Um, that kind of thing. Um, so when I was working on this, I was doing a lot of research on those northern things. And then one day I was doing an I remember, and I, I came up with this, uh, a memory of when I was nine years old, looking out over, uh, out through a picture window toward my, uh, toward this is what I saw through the other side. Um, I came to believe that the flutter of the ice rink was not my father. The man who spread water every night when the weather turned cold became Lord Dufferin, a gray eminence, the namesake of my public school. Sometimes he became an old time hockey player, a Bruin, a Blackhawk, but others, an Inuit, a man of the North. Well, I wrote that and I couldn't believe, well, evolved it evolved at the time it was just written down and uh it was in my book but then when i looked out at the shadowy figure on the ice and began to think about it further i realized you know there's there's lots i don't know about him and about his family and the rest is is the story and that became tip of the iceberg the memoir now some of this is um some of this we can talk about from the standpoint of material let's get to that what is the material? John Berger, the author and uh, critic, um, wrote that there were three sources of which um, writers will, um, will, will can, can dredge up material. And those three sources, I'm going to give you two of his, and, and, and the third is, is mine for memoir, is um, the first is um, experience. Now that's pretty straightforward. That experience is just going to be those that that what happens to you and who and where you were born and what the ethnicity, um, your religion, the you know the place, the experiential. That's sort of like the, the bodily. These are the things you'll write in your journal that are the facts. Those are the things that pretty much stand up as as you. The second thing that writers look at, John Berger said, was witness. Now, witness is a situation where you are, um, take the classic example of witness, which is the dialogue, it's not you. It's, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a it, you know, it's a situation where you are, uh, you know, you know it, that 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 you are um, find um, that you are in conversation with somebody, and and things are happening, and you um, you know are not experiencing them as much as it's happening to you, and you're a witness of it. We can think of it as a witness of of a trial. Those are the kinds of things that get given back to others. And the third thing that I think is really interesting from the standpoint of the memoir and the one thing that we really want to drill in on in terms of, of the creative nonfiction aspect is the imperfect memory. 
Now the imperfect memory piece is really interesting because it talks about the memory of, now I'd like to think that the memory I had on that backyard rink was mine. Uh, my father might have a different memory. Uh, my wife, the memoirist and novelist, tells a story about how it was with her mother that she had this experience. She, she uh, was in, involved in a bicycle accident that was, was pretty, you know, not okay. And she, she had, uh, she had, she had, she had hurt herself falling. And, um, and the next thing that she knew, um, I don't know how her mother got there, but her mother in the emergency got there and she was in her car. And, um, Mary's memory is that, uh, her mother, um, uh, just rolled down the window and said to her, uh, Mary, please get in the car, would you? And, uh, and she, as far as my wife's mother is concerned, uh, didn't have that memory. She said, no, 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 that's not how it happened. What happened was that I got out of the car and I went to you uh, where you were hurt and I, and I gathered you up, you up and, 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 we, and, and took you to the car and took you, took you home. So um, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what she remembers. And um, what's interesting about this is that what it does is it shapes the two worldviews of the people. And if Mary's mother were writing a memoir, she'd write it from a place of that good mother. And when Mary's writing a memoir, she would think, think there's something was missing there. And I'm trying to put together why that's so. And so that is, is how we begin with the, with the imperfect memory. What John Berger would call for fiction is imagination. And so that's where we draw the distinction between the novelist and the memoirist is in terms of that imagination piece. And this might get the cart before the horse and might be part of the second part of the memoir writing symposium. But um, one of the things that we also I want to stress is that in the memoir case, it's different than a memoirs is that in the memoir case you really are using the tools of a novel which is when you open up the memoir you're going to be looking for the same things that you see when you open up and see the novel which is um character and dialogue and pace and and as you know voice if you will even more so um well as much as that uh, i'm i'm particularly drawn to a good voice in a memoir so um those are the kinds of things that that you'll find and those are are, are as i say the cart before the horse will work on that this is about unpacking the material we get to the idea of structure and plot and how to how to bring your story into a, you know a, a more uh complete narrative um at another time so let's go back to that uh toolbox that we're talking about and let's get to the heart of this which is the first hammer in your memoir toolbox and that is uh you know to get to you if you will your backyard ring moment and that's um i remember uh, this is uh, a book by uh <laughs> Joe Brainerd, who um, in 1975, he did a compilation of I Remembers, and, they and it was published in this book. And in each one, one gets a sense of a small part of Joe Brainerd's life in which he was taking out the things that are of value that he, does he want to work on them? He did work on those. I remember as they worked in terms of poems of the start of stories or essences of, of, of essays. Um, they would feed conversation with other artists that would feed work for them. It was part of an organic thing that he published these comp this compilation in, uh, you know, so long ago. And now we're using it as a, as a tool to tell our own stories. And so, so he got his I remembers down and making his kind of impact. Let's make the impact for you. I'm going to recite a few of these I remembers because I think it might help in terms of getting us to the next place in uh, in terms of getting to you to write your own memoir, your own story. Um, 
these are um, these these are these are from Joe uh, Brainerd's uh, I remember. I remember when I didn't really believe in Santa Claus, but I wanted to so badly that I did. I remember pink lemonade. I remember stories about girls being born in taxi cabs. I remember every other Saturday having to get a haircut and how the barber was always clicking his scissors, even when he wasn't cutting anything. I remember crossing your fingers behind your back when you tell a fib. Now, let's do this. Now, we're not going to do our I remembers now, but you will do them if you follow through, if you've got it in mind to. Believe me, it pays dividends. Take, um, take a yellow pad or a note book or whatever it is you like to write in find yourself a real quiet place i tend to think of of places uh, on a park bench or um you know out uh, out on a stoop here in brooklyn wherever that might be for you um i uh, like the idea of the sit spot which we have discovered during you know this this pandemic period where we would you know get to a, a spot and just see where nature was don't go to a place where there's too many birds because you don't want to be distracted at all because you're sitting you're sitting with your material this is stream of consciousness now and you just are writing your i remembers it doesn't have to be you know you you could be that you're involved in a in, in a project like i was at the time you could be influenced by that or not it's just something that it's better frankly to have your 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 mind uh free and uh, and open of all constraints and distractions right your i remembers and they're then and write a batch of them and after those are done in this book set them aside set them aside for a couple of days let them let them let them just marinate they're just done you do other things your life is a busy life um go on with it um then go back with another pad and a uh, notebook and you have your i remembers here and here you're going to put on the on the top this is the way i would do it you know uh, do it if you think this would work for you um, you put focused I remembers. And in the focused I remembers, look into those I remembers that you wrote and, 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 and start to mine them. We're talking a lot about mining material. Start to mine them for um, ideas about things that keep cropping up. And there might be something about, um, about your father. It might be something about an, an old friend that you haven't thought about for a long time. There's a, a, a look that somebody gave you. I remember so, you know, something about a look that a teacher gave you. A lot of these memories are that. They're sort of like trying to bring out the you. And so they go back in time. But the way you're looking at it now might not be the way you thought about it when you first had that memory and is really interesting with to me and to others who have done this is that these focused I remember so often begin stories and stories that were secret and I, if there's any one thing I think the publishers are looking for is a mystery and things that that uh, even the author is finding out as they go and i'm a i'm a big believer in that 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 can really fuel your work if you come to that in the way that you do when you look at these focused i remembers and that these as you write them because now what you're going to do is write these i folk that focused i remembers take those take those examples of things that sort of are in your life and focus on it and write those i remembers as a as a group and uh, do the same thing um it's two days later you go to the same spot you choose a new spot a new park bench i don't know and you find um that it is uh is a place where you can go again deeply into writing more of them even taking some of them that you have written and expanding on them and you'll find that these focused i remembers end up uh, being um again 
uh, remarkable and surprising. Some of these things might be something that was known to you. Oh, I knew that I was going to make that response and that sort of thing. But other things might just come as a, as a shock and, um, and a delightful one. Um, maybe it's lightness, maybe it's darkness, but it's, it's what you've come that has focused um, on, on subject matter that, me, that is very meaningful to you. Then the third bit is um, taking those, and this is getting to the, the end of the idea of using, um, you know, getting to the raw material, because we're not getting into the place of like the big structural issues, is that you're in the third part, you take those, and, and I would say just use the same pad as they have, you know, don't want to use too much paper after all. You know, just like you can do this. So the focus I remember is after that. You can do the scenes, right? The scenes of your eye, of your focused eye remembers. And um, when I say scene, I'm going to say, well, you know, I'm not a literary writer. You know, I don't know the first thing about starting a scene. You know, last scene I thought, saw was, you know, in The Black Widow, you know, there was like this real action scene. Or, wait a minute, you know, I had just had a scene with my partner. Um, what exactly is that? Well, a scene is a, is a single action that moves a story forward. And that's all it is. And so you have that as you see the focused on remember and you want to get that you work toward doing just that get move the story forward that you're looking to tell and furthermore you know the story is a is just a causal connection between scenes um and and that's what you do with the eye focus so the focused eye remembers what I would uh, then do is, uh, is it, you know, is it, you know, is set that work aside and and don't worry about making those connections. That's for another time. Although it, uh, it you know, there might be that you take other classes or work on structure. That would be the thing that um, I would suggest you would take that work that you have. That, uh, that forms the basis of, uh, of, of what could be your personal essay, what could be this surprising memoir, what, what, you know, what could be um, the story you didn't anticipate to tell. This is the, this, this is the raw material that uh, we were setting out to provide at the top of this uh, session. And, um, and, 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 and thankfully, I hope this was, uh, was uh, you know, something that was of interest and, and helpful to you in terms of getting to that place of raw material so that you can take the next steps. I want to, I want to thank Martin and, uh, and Rizzi for bringing, uh, giving me the opportunity to, to talk about, uh, uh, memoir writing is a great passion of mine and uh, of of my wife's. We uh, um, I can so I can just in terms of being able to to share some of these ideas, teaching ideas that I have gives me gives me great pleasure. I I would uh, I would I would close in saying that uh, when it comes to projects that I'm looking for, and I of course in in, encourage you to go to uh, to Reed Z and and uh, look around for the editors there. I'm you know I'm I'm there. I've worked with uh, with memoir um, writers uh, before. I'm you know I'm happy to work with with uh, with others. What I'm really responding to and have really responded to, as you could tell from the way I family man with family dramas and uh, what's hidden from view. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in what I'm talking about today, which is that talent is one thing, but practice and discipline, so do your eye remembers, is what makes good writing. If, if that sounds like you, then I, I welcome reading your work and rolling up my sleeves and helping you, uh, you know, get to a better and more writerly place with your work. Thanks so much. Cool. So when you deal with like most memoir writers at the beginning of their process, do you find that they... Yeah have already focused in on a specific part of their life they want to, want it to be about? Or do you find that they're sort of wanting to write about their life, but they don't know what it is? And so a process like this just lets them, well, mine is much raw material for them to later then determine what it will be about. Well, that's a, you know that's a good question, Martin. It's, it's it kind of comes from, it just runs a gamut um, because there are those who 
um, are interested in telling their story because people, as I said in, in my remarks, people have told them they've always had a story to tell. And then when you ask them what it is, it's just, um, you know, it's, it, they're a little sort of vague about it. And so I think the I remembers in this case helps them to focus on getting to the place that might be, you know, closer to the, you know, the fabric of where the drama is. Mm. But uh, generally speaking, I think at least in the, you know, most of the people that come to me and read and people I've, I've worked with in the past have a strong sense of what they want to tell. Um, and it's something that's happened to them that they want to get to the bottom of. And they, and some of it's, some of it's done from a healing place. I totally understand that. And others, you know, in terms of trying to help others and, and others is, it's trying to make a, a deeper connection, um, in themselves. And, uh, to me, that last bit is, uh, just equally as important as everything else. Um, we're doing a question and answer right now. So if you have any questions for Larry, just put them in the comments. We'll bring them up in a second. Uh, but yeah, to sort of carry on what you're talking about, like, it occurs to me that I guess for a lot of, you know, if I were to, if I was told to write a memoir, I think I'd be sort of lost in how I kind of wanted to portray myself in a way. And it feels like by going into this process, you kind of bypass the, what, how do I want to portray myself and dig deeper into, let's just figure out what I remember. And I guess what I find interesting, um, I guess like the last thing you want to do is put out, you know, hagiography of yourself where... You know, it's just a, a list of your, your fantastic accomplishments uh, entirely tainted by, you know, uh, an agenda you might have subconsciously. Right, right, exactly. And I think that that's, um, it, it, I, I think that strikes to the heart of it, really. As, you know, so it's like, we, you know, we're healthy human beings and we're going to have some you know, healthy outlooks about, you know, uh, notions about what we've done and how we've done it and, and we made the right choices. Um, and, um, you know, and, and, and that ends up being something that doesn't, frankly, make for you know, exciting reading doesn't make for the four publishable works that sort of, you know, page turn in the way that you can really get to, um, to, to, to the, to the heart of something, to a heart of a memory and, and, uh, and, you know, and, and get to get, get to frankly, what the, what the, what the, what the heart is saying. Um, and, and not, and not what the head is saying. Uh, okay, I've got the first. This one I've seen pop up a few times. Carol asks, uh, writing a memoir, do you use real names? Like a lot of people were quite worried about what if, you know, so and so thinks about this or they get, get litigious and whatnot. Yeah, that's that, you know, that's, that, you know, that's always, that's always a tricky one. Um, I mean, you know, but, um, it depends in terms of who well, you would say it depends. It's like, like, you know, I think it was, you know, if it was, it was Philip Roth who who said um, that you know if you if you don't offend your family or your nation or I'm misquoting, then uh, you're not a real writer. There's a certain kind of like step that you take when you sort of go into um, the um, you know the cubicle of the of the writer um, and you say, okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write honestly about my feelings and about the, about the people in my life. Um, where it gets tricky, Carol, I think is, is to your point, which is that, you know, legal departments, right, in, in publishing houses. Um, so that's getting more to the product side of, uh, of, of, of uh, the equation. So, so, it's, so this could be sort of further down the line in terms of what a legal uh, department may say in terms of how you, um, you know, how best, how best to manage some information that you've come up with. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I've seen that happen again, I've most recently worked on, um, a memoir piece where, um, I, I, you know, I had an author back off on some of his, uh, identifications of people surrounding things that were in the news and it didn't, and it, it was memoir in quality and in, in quality and quantity and, and, and style, but it didn't, uh, disturb the message. And that to me is the key is that it doesn't disturb and get in the way of the message you know, and that's what the balance that you're, you're trying to strike. Uh, Pat asks, uh, how much room do we have to recreate dialogue? Hmm. You know, that's, 
that's again, it's a kind of a situation where it is a matter of your memory um, and um, and that you own it and you say, well, this kind of goes into um, an, an, another another category. I think that writers um, are putting themselves, writers of memoirs are putting themselves in a situation where they're recreating moments. There's no two ways about it. It's like, you know, memoir ends up being that by definition. So um, there's a there's a there's a quality. I know it's true. It's a, I know it's true of memoirs that I like to read, which is that there's there's a real sense of of the the writer involved who's paid a lot of attention to cadence, to the way that people speak. There, um, the Irish author John McGarren comes to mind. No, he's not a memoir writer, but whenever I'm reading, you know, his work, um, he's written, of course, about his life, um, but he wouldn't be known as a memoir writing writer. But he's but he's writing in such a way that he has such a terrific ear for the characters, and I think that that's what. I think that is the answer, Pat, which is that if you're writing dialogue and you've created main characters in a memoir that that asks the that sort of that 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 the reader can tell who they are, that that there's a lot of forgiveness there. Um, yeah, there's no expectation that everything you write down is verbatim what they've said. Not at all. Not at all. But it, but it's the, the tone and the manner in which it comes off. And sometimes I think because the other side of it is, is that when you're doing dialogue, you get a sense of one person. It's, it seems like one person writing the dialogue. And often it, in early memoirs, you'll read that. I'll say, I'll say to an author, I'll say, you know what, this doesn't sound like the other person is talking now. It seems like you're talking for both of them. So it's in that sense, the distinction of the dialogue being carefully done. Uh, I've got a question here from Lydia. How long should an I remember exercise be? Short sentences of, uh, or a bunch of different memories or a longer jog down uh, one memory? That's just the way it comes to Lydia. I think that that's a really terrific question. I mean, if, uh, if I think of, uh, you know, this I Remember book, which, you know, I'm going to put it the wrong side. There it is. Um, some of them are really long. Some of them are not necessarily a page long, but they're like six lines long. And it's sort of like just is like a deeper memory. I think the key there is to um, don't... Um, is 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 to is to is this don't sort of set any rules um, in terms of um, how the I remember a moment and it if what usually happened is like put through that moment and then the, and then start another I remember that that might carry on from that and I think that those two things might end up connecting in some way or um you know rather than sort of like getting into a long prose situation where you're sort of defeating the purpose of creating these kernels of of uh of stream of consciousness thought that are basically sort of i remember instances like the santa claus one that joe uses or pink lemonade and things that sort of like um, I had one the other day where it's like, I, I remember pocket protectors, you know, where you have their pens here, you know, it's like those kinds of things that sort of like, I'm dating myself now, but, um, back when but those are the league. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you have to protect your shirt. So, uh, we have a question here from grace. That's uh, I guess more product and process again, are memoirs only for those who are famous, uh, like celebrities and politicians. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's you know that that that's where we get to not not memoir plural, but I'm writing my memoirs. Um, you know, that sort of is happening. You know, you know, in a way that feels um, like that. You know, in terms of publishing, that some that that some of the literary m memoirs that I loved. You know, uh, you know. Oh golly, running in the family and drinking life. Um, you know um, um, the uh, um, you know, the um, Ange uh, Angela's Ashes, which is was that was a memoir that did wonderfully well here um, in this country. It's like those kinds of literary memoirs are are when you say product, sort of like feel like they're not getting published quite in the same fashion. You know, if I had an agent on, they say, "Oh no, we sell them all the time." Like. Um, but I'm, I think that 
the average person who um, is you know asking the question, well, what's a memoir? What I'm going to read? And there's just so many um, celebrity biographies that are being written or autobiographies are being written with somebody and uh you're absolutely right in terms of in terms of like the market it does feel like it's filling up with those kinds of memoirs which to my mind are not the kinds of memoirs that we're talking about because it's you know at another level of interest i mean it's it, you know these are these are fan base yeah. or literary work. yeah i guess if, if uh yeah I think there are, there is a market for if in your memoirs you in your memoir you tell a great story, because like a novel, it is the story that sells it. But if you're writing a memoir and you reckon people should buy it because it's you, then you better be a celebrity because <laughs> if it's right. on name alone. You're gonna need a name for that. But you know yeah. that being said, we have a lot of people who are writing memoirs, you know, not for the sake of selling millions and millions of copies, but you know because it's something they want to leave behind and it's you know an equally it's valid right. experience. That's right. That's right. It's one of the great things about Ritzy that it does that. You know, it does provide the opportunity for people to tell their stories and tell their stories in a very unique way. Uh, okay, let me find uh, another question. Uh, Harry Strange asks, uh, would you want to read a book which describes the 10 most important decisions in my life and how I made them? Yeah. Hmm. That's... Well, it'd have to, you know, that's the kind of thing that I'd be interested in learning more about, you know, um, that's, uh, that, 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 that is, you know, it, that's something that could end up being a, a, a topic for, a, you know, a, a small book, or it could end up being, um, the, you know, the first chapter of something that is, um, you know, this is my life. Um, and, uh, you know, invariably we're sort of like talking about because I, I was working with uh with a writer who uh he was looking to do his uh it's looking to do his 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 memoirs his his uh, his grandpa memoirs if you will for his children leaving them behind and um and and and, and in that category i could see that being a being a chapter in that book it's a kind of a situation where you know um these are the war years these are the 10 most important decisions and how i made them um that could sort of like have the arc of something that was uh was was uh, worthy of attention yeah but something like this, as someone has pointed out, it does feel like a self-help book. I suppose if you do frame it in this way, it sounds like I want to teach you something. Whereas I think right. maybe the regular memoir reader wants to be told a story. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Right. In, in that sense, it's a different category to say, you know, I need to learn, you know, to... to, to I, I, I need that to, uh, yeah, it's to, to, to help me to get to yes, that sort of thing. Uh, okay, well, well, I'm looking for another question. Uh, could you, uh, would you be able to talk a bit about what it's like to go for a traditional publishing deal as a memoir writer? Uh, does it, you usually mm -hmm. go through literary agents or is it something that yeah. you normally pitch straight to a publisher? Um, no, no, that's a, that's something that you'd want to have a literary agent behind. I mean, in terms of uh, going to a commercial publisher. Um, at the same time, there are uh, depends on the on the on the subject matter, on the topic, on the kinds of of uh, you know memoir that you're writing, because there are a lot of of uh, small presses now that are very pointed, like women's interest ones and gender specific ones, and and, and books that. Um, you know, coming out books, um, those kinds of, uh, you know, gay and lesbian press and what have you. I mean, I think in terms of talking about about uh, market and, and, and pitching ideas, you can have an agent to do that, but there's enough small presses out there. And if you've got the story to tell, um, then um, that's something that you can do your own query letter and send it to small presses and, uh, and do it that way. Uh Ben has a question uh, to clear up. A lot of people have been asking. Uh, could you talk about the difference between autobiography and memoir? Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot. The, there's actually no difference really in that, Ben, to tell you the truth, in the sense of, like we were saying earlier about memoirs and autobiography, 
like you can read some typically typically when i'm reading something that is labeled autobiography it's going to be something that comes from a place that doesn't necessarily uh cleave to the same kind of structural you know um architecture that uh, a memoir does which is more like a novel when i'm reading an autobiography i don't tend to expect to have the uh i don't expect expect to have the same kind of level of of uh of structure in it that's sort of going to be more sort of a like the like the memoirs structure where it it um where it, it where it, it it's it's kind of be just like packages of information about a person that takes them through their lives rather than something that is closer to um character main character and plot and mystery and surprise that a memoir will show uh yeah like i find some of the more interesting memoirs like the fact yeah i guess it is quite broad and quite flexible you can you could technically have a memoir that only spans what three days of your life potentially right exactly exactly that's a really good point because you're you know just going to you know to deliver the micro experience of that of of of, of you know with you know the the equivalent the literary the memoir equivalent of saturday by ian McEwan. you know which is something that happens within the context of a single day in that case um it's it's exactly right and so that that you know you're not going to find a three-day autobiography not even you know my grandson would make for 11 month autobiography but that's <laughs> no <laughs> yeah it would just be mainly photos uh jane yeah. has a question here uh you talked about the imperfect witness is this a second person opinion of your memory uh what is it exactly um it's an imperfect memory yeah but um yeah, that was my you know the the sheet um because so that's you know rather than a you know an imperfect witness which of course you know would sort of like in terms of john berger was saying like experience and witness are the two things that a writer would use as, as sources for um for the stories he's telling for the information he's gathering the raw material um but in imperfect memory um you know that's again you know something that is something that is you know it's another way to put it is uh, imperfect memory and emotional truth it's a kind of thing that sort of happens to you and you say to yourself this is exactly what happened to me you know this is this 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 but it might not necessarily be so mm. um it's a way it's your, it's what you took away and that's that to me is the is the heart of of what makes good writing because you can really you can really feel the the tension the heart the the um the, you know the, the 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 weight of the of importance of whatever happened to that writer at that moment so like when you talk about um you know memory and then the witness uh right would you say that you just go around collecting your material with your I remembers, then sort of spin them into scenes. And then at that point, would you go out and start interviewing people to sort of discover what, you know, where the chasm might be between what you remember, and what they do? Or mm. like, is that, mm. would you, would you see interviewing people as part of that initial mining interviewing process? People like if you were, if you were writing something that was family based or was, uh, or was work based or, you know, you mean to say interviewing other people to determine what, you know, what their purchase was on that memory? Yeah. I guess like if you, you know, have a memory about a, a conference you went to 20 years ago, uh, you know, right. would you then maybe reach out to someone else that you may have not seen since then see, if they remember something from that as well, I guess to fill it out, mm -hmm. you sort of start, you know, I guess as a memoir, is, it is your perspective, it is your memory, but is there any sort of obligation or benefit to sort of corroborating it in some way? Well, that's a, yeah, a really good point, Martin. I think, I think, you know, it, you know, once again, that's a situation that kind of just depends on the moment. There could be something that really, you know, you, you, you're writing about, you know something that happened in uh, in real time with real people out there and you have this memory and you sort of like um are just going with it 
Um, but, you know, it is your obligation to sort of, you know, to talk to people to get a sense of what their experience was so that you can, you can, you can deepen your writing on, on, on that part of the memoir, that scene. And, uh, so I, I, I think that if, if it were me and I was working in that way, I would be reaching out to uh, colleagues, people, if they remembered things quite the way that I did. At the same time, every writer is going to be different about this. I mean, it's a very solitary pursuit. A lot of writers, you know, there's Paul Foster lives in the neighborhood here. And when you talk to him, you'd say, well, you know, what what do I need to know about Chicago? Because my wife's from Chicago. And, and he'll say, tell me, Tell me six things. He'll say, and I want to know six, seven things. And she'll say, you know, Wrigley Field, you know, uh, the Lake, Lake Michigan, you know, you know the, uh, um, you know, Thousand uh, Lakeshore Drive where I lived uh, for 20 years. He said, that's enough. That's all I want. And then, and then he, you know, needs he needs to live with that and work with that, and that becomes his work. Now that's fiction, but memoirs can work in the same way. They're they, uh, they, you know, they're driven by the story and not necessarily by um, the verisimilitude about what actually happened. Yes, they they want to know that when you're writing your memoir, they want to know what really happened. But what is at the core is is the uh, is the story they're telling, and that's very personal. Yeah, I can't remember who said it, but the idea of uh, storytelling is. Uh, real life with all the boring bits cut out. So, yeah, you have no <laughs> obligation to put down everything. You can, I guess, compress and sort of cut out and you know, amalgamate stuff. Uh, Denise mm -hmm. asks, in writing a scene, how detailed should it be from the room atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. I guess this sort of gets to back to the point you said about it being closer to writing a novel. It's a story. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's a kind of thing, um, Denise, when you get, when you get you, when you sort of are, um, let's say, let's go back to the, you know, the the focus die remembers, and you start to write the, you write, start to write the scene, and and let's say that uh, that focus die remember it was um, about how you were focusing on, you know, this old friend of mine who um, made um, made me made me mad because he, he, you know, he took a, a step too close to me at a certain point when I wasn't ready for him. And then um, I never saw him again. Um, if you wanted to take that and turn it into a scene, those kinds of things would shape the details that you would bring to it. So each and every one of those scenes that you're writing through those focused eye remembers could be just like very basic because all you want to do is perhaps it's just in the dark. Perhaps you didn't even, you could just see the whites of his eyes. Perhaps it was that, that kind of, and that's the kind of thing that works for me in terms of looking at what these eye remembers do is that they sort of are unearthing some of the darker sides of our lives sometimes, or even, the, you know, it doesn't have to be that. It could be, you know, sweetness and light and, you know, uh, a farm visit you had to grandma, you know, before she died and, and she baked you this apple pie and everything else. Well, then sort of all kinds of other things come into play. You know, that would be the smell and that would be the, you know, the, the you know, the the light that came in through the um, through the mullioned windows and all those kinds of things are dictated by the eye remembers it's one of the things i really like about this exercise because it gets it, it gets very granular you say well you know what do i put into the scene well the focused eye remember shapes that shapes you know what the scene looks like joey uh, asks or says a good idea to do historical research on the period of my memories well i guess it oh is. yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah, Joey, that is like such a great idea. You know, one of the things I really do a lot of, which is, you know, uh, my wife jokes about this, which she basically says, Larry, you know, it's like, well, I've been telling her, her this for years. So, so I guess it's easy to joke, but she says, you know, you only do three things in scenarios I can tell you, you read and you write and you run. <laughs> it's like, and I think it's one of the things that, 
Um, when I talk to a lot of writers, I get a sense that, you know, or you know, starting out writers, um, you know that they're they you know that there's not a lot of reading that they are doing around the things that they're interested. In. I'm sure that you know that's not necessarily the case case for the people I'm talking to today. But I mean, I couldn't say enough about reading about um, you know, reading really good stuff. Not stuff on the internet and not stuff that sort of you find in the dark web or whatever, but the stuff, really good stuff, historical research on the on the on the memories that um, like if you're looking back in the 70s or, or the 80s and 90s and you sort of like listening, you, you listen to soundtrack, you got the soundtrack on of that period and, and uh, you're reading, you know, you, you go back and find out, you know, what was the, in, in the United States, what was the New York Times bestseller list, uh, what was on it in 1992 and go to the library and get like four of those books and you sort of like you can't believe what's going to come to you um when you sort of enter that project it's really exciting stuff yeah well one of the things that i've been i found like quite useful for jogging memories there are like facebook groups of just about any town you can imagine going like uh say hey it's lost whatever town and people who grew up there will like start sharing photos that they have of like a certain corner in 1972 or 1991 you know because they're not pictures you've ever seen before but places that you've been I find myself myself just remembering, oh, like a moment that I haven't thought about for 20 years simply because I hadn't seen that particular corner of the street. Uh, right, right. Uh, let's yeah. see if we can find one more question <clears throat> uh, before we uh, log off. Uh, Mel asks, should you stick to your story if subjects if a subject's memory of events are very different from yours? Ah... Uh. You know, um, I'm going to, you know, you know, unless unless you were going down a rabbit hole during that time and you sort of like didn't have much of a memory or whatever. I don't know, Mel, I don't mean that personally. All I'm saying is it's your story. And it's one of the things that I like to kind of lift up writers, you know, as much as I can, because I think that there is a tendency to um, allow the other voices um, in your life to take over. I know that that's true of, like I was saying earlier, about people from the north and people who are more reserved and polite and, and you know, speak when they're spoken to and all that when I grew up, uh, the way I grew up, you know, sort of, you know, disinclined to listen to my own story. You know, there's sometimes even in my own life now, I sort of like saying, you know, Larry, you know, you've got something to say. Okay, so I'll speak, you know, and people say, well, you know, okay, well, that sounded like interesting and then i'll sort of like go quiet again so mel i couldn't tell you uh you know to follow that path um you know with with more um you know with more passion you know just it's your story um if they're significantly different than others you know ask some questions and get a little you can go a little bit further but uh stick to your guns you know i'm you know i'm just a gunslinger what can i tell you <laughs> So, cool. And with that, uh, we're approaching the end of the hour. Thank you, everyone at home, for uh, sticking around for the Q&A. Thanks for the great questions there. And uh, Larry, uh, thank you for uh, sharing uh, this with us. Uh, I find it incredibly useful. Um, anyone who wants to uh, see what Larry is all about, his ReadZ profile is linked in the description below. Uh, he is an editor here on ReadZ, so if uh, you're looking for one or uh, need someone to help you through your memoir, perhaps, uh, uh, then, uh, yeah, send them a request through Reedsy. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll have another one of these uh, in, I think, a couple of weeks. Uh, head to blog.readsy.com slash live, and you can see our upcoming uh, webinars. We've got one on uh, starting to write a book, really, it's a novel, uh, and also one of our first-line frenzies, uh, where you can submit the first line of your book for a critique from Becca Heyman, one of our editors. Uh, we're doing that in early September, but you can sign up now. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us. Thank you, Larry. Uh, I'll catch you all soon. Bye. Thanks a lot. Cheers.